What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Red Labs and today I'm going to show you how to create this holographic metal effect in Cinema 4D. Alright, so before we head into the video, just two little things. You're gonna need Octane Render Engine if you want to do this in Cinema 4D. And the second one is you can get the project file for this and all of my other tutorials if you become a patron of mine. Stick around till the end of the video to learn more or check the link down in the description. Alright, so here is the setup of our project. Uh, essentially, we have uh, four letters that we made using the volume builder. And if you want to learn how I did this 3D effect, you can check one of my last tutorials. Links also down in the description. Then we have this morphing sphere with the spacer on it. Uh, and that's just to give you guys a little bit of an idea on how the depth looks like on this uh, effect. Uh, as you can see, in my opinion, though, it looks a little bit better uh, with like harder edges and flattened surfaces. Uh, and essentially this effect is really, really simple. All right, so first let's start off by creating the environment. Uh, essentially what we're gonna need is an Octane HRI environment. And in the image texture, we're gonna load in a photo. Uh, for me, we're gonna do a small studio HRI, nothing too special. If we look around here, it's just a simple studio HRI. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna edit it a little bit. So under texture, we're gonna go to C for the Octane and gradient so here um, so essentially this now puts a gradient map on our image and you want to change the black to maybe like an 85 percent darker light value if that makes sense so if we take a look around our environment now you can kind of still see the picture the studio especially the light over there um, but essentially it's like a really light light gray now so with that being done we're finished with the environment Next, we're gonna make our material. We're gonna to go to materials, create octane metallic material. And we're just gonna immediately apply this to our volume measure, which is our text, as well as the sphere. As you can see, it's a really shiny like metal now. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of roughness, just so that the light reflects a little bit more over the surfaces. Now I'm gonna open up the node editor. And as you can see, it's on my right side here. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with the film width. Uh, and if you don't know what the film width is, essentially this is something to do with oil material. I'm not like an expert on this, so I'm not gonna try to explain it if I don't know what I'm talking about. But you can use this to make rid of some materials. So if we open this up and we're gonna change this float, as you can see, it starts having these nice gradient colors. Uh, and you can get some pretty cool stuff with this. But for now, we're gonna leave it at zero. Uh, because we're actually going to uh, play with this a little bit. So we're going to drag in an octane gradient and we're going to link that to the film width. And as you can see, this now creates this weird pattern where it rotates around where the surface material is, if that makes sense. Already looks pretty cool, but what I did was I just also dropped in a fall off and I got by this effect by just experimenting. And once we drag that to our texture, you can see that the fall off basically means like where like the end of your material is from the perspective of the viewer, if that makes sense. So the further away, like from the viewer or the, and mostly these are the edges, uh, there's, that's where the uh, film width effect starts happening. And uh, because the gradients in there, essentially like it's gonna cycle through all of these different colors, creating a holographic effect, which is really, really cool. So to give you a little bit more control, if you go to the gradient, you can actually play around with the sliders. So if you crunch these a little bit, you're gonna move them a little bit more to the inside, as you can see in the sphere. And you can also do the same, but with the darker part, and you can just move them a little bit more to the back. And as you can see, once I drag in this dark slider or the black part of the gradient, uh, it's gonna move further away to the edges from the viewer's pers perspective. So the more you drag the white in, the more it comes to the front, and the more you drag it to the back, the more it goes further away from the viewer. So that's it for this pretty short tutorial. I uh, hope it was useful. Uh, like I said before in the video, if you wanna get the project file for this, or any of the other project files from all of my tutorials, including Photoshop files, Illustrator files, Cinema 4D files, and way, way more, you can become a patron of mine. So essentially I need patrons to keep up the channel and keep up the weekly tutorials for you guys. Uh, and as a thank you for that, you'll, besides getting access to all the project files from my tutorials, you'll also get a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive role in the Discord server of Dreadlabs. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos, such as how to start your own clothing brand and how to make a Y2K Ray Flyer from scratch. So if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. But if you don't have the budget to support Red Labs, of course, that's completely fine as well. Leaving a like, comment and a subscribe if you haven't already, already does a lot. So with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dread Labs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I hopefully see you guys in the next video.